Welcome back, Shalligators. Welcome back to our Shalentine's Day coverage. We've been talking this week about all things Cupid, right? Now, here on YouTube, we've talked about how to enjoy being single on Valentine's Day, but over at Plays our sexier little platform that's uncensored and ad free. So for all the stuff that YouTube won't let us talk about because they're such prudes, head on over to Flays and sign up. Uh, it's super fun, super cheap. Plus all of Evil Week is over there. But today we're gonna keep it PG and we're gonna talk about date ideas. Now, typically in the past, the world has been our oyster, right? Our germy oyster, our blissfully ignorant germy oyster, but <clears throat> things are different, unfortunately, now. And we have to be a little bit more creative about our dates. Maybe you live in a place that's sort of open. Maybe you live in a place that's not open at all. Montana is like basically 100% back open. I mean, we have to wear masks like Target and stuff, but there's bars and, you know, I'm, you know. So everyone's options are kind of different, but that's okay. I've got some date ideas that are gonna work no matter what's going on in your environment or what's going on in your relationship because it can be really difficult to figure out what to get someone for every stage of dating. I have a video on that. A few years ago, I did a video on that. I gave you guys some good, <clears throat> excuse me, um, some good ideas, some good products, head over. You can like click this link, it's popping up someplace around here. You can click that and watch it. I figure, you know, we don't need to do that again because my advice is still basically the same. And sorry, yeah, I'm still here in my lingerie. Right? Get them out, you know, I like the way I look and people like, mm, you should put those away, put your own away. People wanna see mine. And you know what, they probably wanna see yours too. Just lighten up. Anyway, let's talk date ideas. I was thinking about like, <clears throat> you know, what are like great dates? Like when I've had like the best dates of my life, what did they entail? The difference between a date and hanging out or just going out with your friends is intentionality, right? Someone asks you on a date. You make plans. It's There's reservations. There's a plan in general. It's different than like, yeah, you know, we just like cruised over to Olive Garden, unlimited breadsticks, whatever. That's technically maybe a date, but it's very different than when your boyfriend like sends you a text in Italian, like he Google translates it, invites you to the Olive Garden. We're going to Italy tonight, Kimber, like come with me. We're going, we eat the breadsticks. We eat the salad. We feel nauseous afterwards. That's what we do. And he makes it a whole thing. And then you go home and you watch like Moonstruck or some sexy Fellini Italian movie. That is a date. My best date that I've had, <coughs> excuse me, in a while, maybe ever, was when I got to Montana. I, I was new in Montana and I went out with this boy named Nick. And he's very like rugged, not like in a gross way, but like hunts and fishes and does things with trucks and guns. And I'm like, <laughs> I have a lot of robes and boobs. <laughs> I'm like basically useless here, <clears throat> but it was the summer and he took me up to this like secret lookout peak in Paradise Valley in these, in the Absaroka Mountains, like this beautiful mountain range. Basically it looks like Yellowstone because it's the gateway to Yellowstone. <clears throat> and he, cause he knows I love s'mores and stuff. And so he built a little fire. He had like this little like camping fire. We were in the back of his truck and he brought like all these blankets and everything to like make it really comfy. And we watched the sunset and we roasted marshmallows and we made s'mores and he brought wine. And it was, I mean, it was the best date of my life. And we were sitting in the back of a truck, drinking a bottle of wine, making s'mores. That date probably cost $25 and it will live in infamy for me forever. Why? Because it was intentional. He knew that I love the sunset. I'm like, don't fuck with the sunrise. I do not fuck with the sunrise. If I see the sunrise, I've been up all night doing something I shouldn't have, <clears throat> or I'm up early for a flight or a spin class. No, give me sunset all day. So he knows I like loved the sunset in the valley. He knows I love s'mores. He knew I love Sauvignon Blanc. We listened to country music. We had pillows and I'm like, this is just, it was so special because it was thoughtful. When we think about people buying us a present, you know the old adage, it's the thought that counts. Like 
I've always, that has been weaponized against us. It's like, here's your Whitman sampler of shitty Rite Aid chocolates, but it's a thought that counts. You're like, no, I know exactly how much thought went into this. Thank you. And I'm counting it. I'm counting it. But what we like about presents, when we think about it, is our friends thinking about us. Like one of my friends, Katie, she got me uh, packing cubes because I was traveling a lot, was. <clears throat> and 2020, I had like a trip, an international trip every month. I was gonna be packing a ton. <clears throat> so she got me these packing cubes and they were um, customized with XO on them. And I'm like, that is so thoughtful. Like she knows my brand. She knows I love to travel. She knows I'm a bad, messy packer. And I loved thinking about her coming up with that because that's what warmed my heart. It's like the packing cubes were cool, but it was so cool to think about how much time and like how much awareness she put into. She sees me with that gift, you know? It's like people who remember little things about you and they, they put it in their back pocket and they're observant. We all want to be observed, especially by our partner on Valentine's Day, right? Or any day. It's like, we want to know our boyfriend is listening to us. Why did you take me to a sushi place when you know I'm allergic to fish? Why are we at a Thai restaurant when I have the cilantro gene, which I do, right? Why did you get me a bottle of whiskey when you know, like, I don't drink? Like, there's nothing more insulting when someone who, who is supposed to listen to you and loves you, like, has these huge blind spots. And it's like, do you even know me? And nothing feels lonelier than that. Nothing feels lonelier than being in a relationship with someone who isn't actually listening to you. It's infinitely worse than being single. Being single, it's like, well, I know no one's listening to me. I'm listening to me. I'm buying my own sushi and avoiding Thai food and whatever. So I say this. <clears throat> because when you're thinking about what to do for Valentine's Day, a date, intentionality needs to be the name of the game. The best dates are the simplest ones. The truck bed, right? My first date with my ex-boyfriend, Max, he knew that I like loved the waterfront. Like we had talked about that. So we went down to the waterfront. He got a bottle of wine that I liked and we just sat there. Like, but it was great. Like it was so beautiful. It was fantastic. He like had a picnic thing and some cheese. <clears throat> So it's all about intentionality. And that's something you can tell your partner. Be like, hey, you know what? I know it's been a hard year. Maybe it's been a hard year financially. Maybe you guys can't go out where you are. Be like, I don't need like the big limo party bus arriving and the, the singing telegram. I do need something that you plan that's thoughtful and that's intentional, right? I'm a big theme person. Like I, like I give that example, Olive Garden. It's like, you send the text in Italian, and we're going to Italy tonight, eh? And we're going to order this stupid accent. C'è mio accento, sono italiano, no? Like, that's funny, because it's intentional. So here are some date ideas that are easy, cheap, and intentional. And I'm going to culminate this video with my absolute go-to most romantic gift. It is a... Scavenger hunt. We'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. Okay. <clears throat> so contrary to popular belief, the best dates aren't like going to dinner. Like that's nice and we all gotta eat. But again, like you might've just ended up at this place anyway, eating dinner. It doesn't feel intentional. <clears throat> Dates should promote bonding. That's the point, right? You wanna get closer to your partner. What promotes bonding? The release of endorphins. The release of endorphins promotes bonding. The release of oxytocin also promotes bonding. That happens with breastfeeding. Don't recommend you breastfeed your boyfriend. Anyway, endorphins are released through physical activity. Now, I'm not saying you guys need to go run a 10K, like, unless that's your thing. Like, you guys could have, like, a, a race or something like that. You could go on a hike together. That's something you can do that's distance, that's COVID-friendly. You know, they can't, they can't keep you indoors. <clears throat> you could go to one of those bouncy houses, like the trampoline parks. Those are open here in Montana, and I think they're even open, like, in New York. But, like, check around. But make that kind of a focus. Okay, something that's physical. Even if it's, we're just going for a walk, we're gonna drive to the rich part of town, and we're going, we're gonna, we're gonna dress up in our like preppiest outfits, right? You're gonna wear your little Izod sweater with the alligator. I'm gonna wear my tennis outfit from high school, and we're gonna walk around, and we're gonna pretend we're looking at houses. Ugh, we're gonna talk like this buffet. Oh, yes, Chip. And we're gonna pick out which houses we would like. And then, okay, that's my favorite house, and we would have a gold retriever, and his name would be Skippy, and, I would have this kind of car and I would decorate it like this. It's easy, it's interactive. You're doing physical things that release those endorphins. You're learning more about each other and you're spending not a dime. 
You can add in some Starbucks, you can bring a bottle of champagne, put some wine in a Camelback, get creative. The point is it's intentional and it promotes the bonding, right? Go-karts are also fun. So there's this tendency to like veer away from like teen dates. We have this thing in Irvine called, I think it was, I think it was called Palace Park. It was like, they had like mini golf and an arcade and you know, like churros and laser tag and, and go-karts and stuff. And it was like where all of us would go when we were like in middle school and like early high school. Like our moms would drop us off there. They'd be like, ugh, see your ass in six hours. And like when you're in college, you're like, I don't want to go there. And when you're in your early 20s, you're like, that's lame and weird. It's also wicked fun. Like if you lean into something and be like, no, we're going to go pretend we're teenagers. Okay. We can be like awkward and not hold hands. And let's see how long we can go without touching each other. That's kind of like a fun, sexy game. Like my boyfriend in college, one time we like, I had a cold. I was like, we can hook up. I, I can't kiss you though. If we hook up, I can't kiss you. I don't want to get you sick. And so we tried to hook up without kissing. And it was like actually like really hot. Try it. Try it. But again, think outside the box. All the things you're like, oh, that's stupid. Olive Garden, going for a walk, going to Palace Park. Yeah, man. If you lean into how weird and lame it is and make that actually part of the theme, it's intentional. And then it feels special. And then it feels like, Something really like silly and goofy that you did, and play is extremely important to us as human beings. Play regenerates our soul. <clears throat> it sparks our passion. It gets us back to what I always called the best nine-year-old day. You know, when we can act like kids, especially with our partner, it really promotes a lot of understanding and bonding, right? And you're building a lot of memories together. Something else you can do, I love the movies. Now, we in Bozeman are, Movie theater is not open, but in Livingston it is. And for another great date I went on over the summer with the same guy, actually, we went to the movies. And because there was no um, like new movies coming out, they were showing like Raiders of the Lost Ark and all the Indiana Jones and Star Wars. And I was like, he, he was kicking and screaming. He did not want to go. But I'm like, when are we going to see Indiana Jones on the big screen ever again? Like never, you know, this would be so fun. It was great. <clears throat> So stuff like that, if you make it intentional, it's like, we're going to get our snacks. I'm going to dress up like one of the characters. We're going to go see a Harry Potter. But look, I know the movies might not be open. That's okay. You can do your own movie night at home if you make it intentional, right? If you like James Bond movies or he likes James Bond movies, make characters for yourself. Have him ahead of time write down your Bond girl character. My name is Jinx Magoo. Not Jinx Magoo, but you know, and I'm from I'm from Monaco, and I smoke um, unfiltered cigarettes. This is not the Monegasque accent, but just go with it. Like, come up with a whole character, and then try to spend like your entire dinner or 15 minutes or your foreplay in characters. James Bond, make martinis, have intentionality, have a theme. Fuck, this is making me want a boyfriend because it sounds really fun. But then I think, you know what? I don't know many boys that would want to do this, but all my girlfriends would. And this goes back to the video on how to be happy single on Valentine's Day. Like all the things you think boys are going to give to you, sometimes if we're being realistic, they wouldn't be gang for it. They wouldn't be into it like, oh, this is stupid. But I bet your friends would be. I'd so much rather have my friends as my Valentine than some bullshit boy. I'm like dragging, kicking, and screaming into my version of happiness. Like, why would I do that? or I'd rather just do it by myself. The other night I went on my own little James Bond marathon. I made myself dirty martinis, shaken, even though that's not how you're supposed to make them. You're not, you're supposed to stir all martinis. <clears throat> I watched two Bond movies. I had a gay old time, I had a great time. And it's like, thank God I didn't have to constantly look over at a guy like, do you hate it? Wait, do you know what's going on? You're not watching. Are you on Snapchat? No, you have to watch this part. Did you like it? I don't need that. I don't need it. So COVID is an obstacle. Money is an obstacle. And the winter is also an obstacle. I mean, I don't know where you guys live, but if you live someplace snowy, like it's maybe not realistic to get out and go for a hike or go to the go-kart places or whatever. Again, try to turn the weaknesses into strengths. One thing I've wanted to do is have like a winter day. And I was either with like a boy or my friends, but again, like my friends would probably be more into this. Have a snowball fight. I've never had a snowball fight in my life. It's to totally snowy here. Have a snowman making competition. Then everyone comes inside. You have a hot cocoa bar set up. 
with different kinds of hot cocoa, cinnamon, salted cocoa, caramel, marshmallows, the little toffee pieces. Maybe you can have it spiked, add some alcohol. And then if it's a boy, like give each other massages, a way to warm up, sit by the fire if you have one. It's just about adding, again, intentionality, theme, a little bit of physicality, and thoughtfulness to ordinary activities. And suddenly they go from very ordinary whatever-ish, drinking hot cocoa, blah, to special. And specialness is what creates memory. So, remember how I said I was going to tell you my favorite date? Okay. I might have like talked about this in a video like at some point, but fuck it. I'm going to talk about it again because it's such a good idea that <clears throat> I want someone out there to do this. So when I need to do a really big, cool thing for a guy, and the good part is about this, it can be tailored to any stage of your relationship, any stage, any vibe of your relationship whatsoever. I do a five senses scavenger hunt. Okay. So I first did this for my boyfriend in college. Okay. So the five senses, we have smell, taste, sound, right? Hearing, sight, and touch. So what you're going to do, you're going to get a present. It doesn't have to be a huge present, but for each sense, like for smell, cologne is like the go-to. I always buy the guys I date cologne because I want them to smell how I want them to smell. Not like fucking Axe body spray, like Bigfoot dick. No. Okay. You're going to, we're going to do this the way I do this. I don't buy the same scent for every guy I date. That would be super, wouldn't that be bizarre if like, you try to make them all smell the same. But a nice gift set is like the cologne and then the matching deodorant. Like nice cologne, like Aqua de Parma has cologne and a, and a complimentary deodorant, which is really cool. So that can be smell. And then on there, you leave a clue. So you do this at your house, right? You leave a little clue. Like for example, um, to find your next present, go to where dirty girls get clean. Now he might go to the washing machine. Oh, it's not there, no. It might be the kitchen sink. No, it's not there. It's the shower or vice versa, right? And then there's a little clue there. Taste. What could taste be? I always make chocolate covered strawberries. They're super cheap. You just buy like the meltable chocolate. You can get it at Michael's. You can get it at the grocery store. Strawberries, dip it, drizzle some white chocolate, add some sprinkles. People are beyond impressed at chocolate covered strawberries. And they're so simple. They take like literally five minutes. I'm going to make some tonight because I don't need a man to do things to impress myself. I can date myself. It is fun. Okay. Then you have another clue. Now here's where things can get spicy. Sound. Back when I like did this in college, we were, we could make like mixed CDs. I miss that, man. It's just not the same to make like a playlist because a playlist, say you send someone a playlist on Spotify, they can see everything that's on it. They're like, I, I'm not gonna like that song, no. But a CD, it's like a journey and they don't know what's on it and you could like decorate it. I miss that, I do. I was thinking, I was like, I'm gonna buy a CD burner. I don't even know what they're called. And then I'm like, where is anyone even gonna play a CD? My car doesn't have a CD player, does yours? I have no idea. Okay. So for sound, you could do something like, yeah, you could buy someone a CD, but again, like, where are they going to play this? <clears throat> you could buy them a record if they're into records. I just bought a record player. I'm very into records now. You could do an IOU for a concert. Print out, a, you could go on Etsy and download a little, like, fake um, concert ticket template and customize with, like, g Easy, like, date TBD, where, like, you and me, front row, whatever it might be, you know? It's also kind of cheap, just in case it doesn't work out or you guys break up. But one thing you could do, you could get them headphones, like earbuds, cheap headphones. You know, I like my Raycon, you know, I do. I love Raycon. So you could have headphones and then your phone sitting there with a note on it of a voice note that says, play me. And then that's the next clue. It's very Alice in Wonderland. -y. Or it could be like a sexy thing. It could be a sexy song. Like listen to this song at the end, you're going to get a clue. So it's tweakable if you're a little conservative if you're a little spicier you can do whatever you want next comes sight and you can you can switch these around you can switch obviously you can switch these around it might be nice to end with taste you'll see why when we get to the very end but sight could be something as spicy as like your laptop sitting there with a Pornhub video all queued up right click play watch for two minutes then go see your next clue it could be a framed poster something he likes some piece of childhood art that he did that he always wanted like to keep. And you can frame things at Michael's for very, very cheap. Like you can frame things like almost anywhere for cheap, like TJ Maxx. It could be a movie that you're going to watch later. There's so many different things, right? 
So get creative. It could be a pair of sunglasses even, sight. But the last one is the most important, touch. Can you think of what touch is going to be? The last clue leads him to the bedroom and you are there in all your gloriousness, either in your nakedness, your whipped cream bikininess. Let me tell you something, the whipped cream bikini melts wicked fast. In Varsity Blues, when Darcy does it, it's actually shaving cream, because it doesn't melt. So you're gonna do the whipped cream bikini, he's gotta be like standing right there. Anyway, so you're there ready to be touched. You've maybe got some hot massage oil, some coconut oil, something like that. You've got the scented candles going, the lights are down low. You say, do you know what sense I am? He'll say, touch. You're like, well, don't just talk about it. Come over here and do it. Show me. That's all you need to do. And just sell it. Practice like whatever line you're gonna have and sell it. And it's okay to giggle. If you guys go to Flays, I did a whole video on dirty talk and like some go-to dirty talk phrases, but it's okay to make things funny and like lighthearted. It doesn't have to be like, come over here and fuck me. Like that can just be like a lot. Like You can crack up, it's like, do you know that I'm touched? Well, come on, baby. Like it can be silly. It can be whatever vibe your relationship is, but it's important that you end with the touchy. You're the touch and get some lingerie. Now we talked about lingerie in the podcast, the girl on top podcast recently. And I talked about lingerie a little bit in the how to be single on Valentine's day video. Lingerie is wrapping paper, right? I love to wrap presents and I love to wrap this present, my body, <clears throat> but I don't spend like a billion dollars on like wrapping paper. If people are just going to tear through it. So take that attitude with lingerie. You don't have to get Cosabella or, you know, Asia provocateur or whatever. Go to Target, Walmart, TJ Maxx. They all have really great lingerie. And my thing with lingerie is I wear it once and I never wear it again. Like, and I let a guy know, it's like, this is for you, daddy. Only you get to see this. And after this, no one else is going to touch this or me. And sometimes I give them a pair of scissors when I'm in lingerie. I'm like, cut it off me, rip it off me, tear it off me, take it off with your teeth. And they're like, ah, because that's what people do with wrapping paper. They just like want to tear through it. Cause it can be awkward to like, you're not going to stand there and be like, like a, like a cow at an auction, right? That's awkward. And that's what we like think we have to do in lingerie. Nah, make it fun, make it temporary. Let them know and say, this is wrapping paper, baby. Come open your present, lean into it, you know? So don't spend a lot on lingerie. Always go for black or red. Guys love red lingerie, but it's a hard color with most of our skin tones. I look like a tick about to pop in red anything, so I don't wear it. Black is the wave, it's very naughty. Don't go white, it's like too bridal or too like little girl. And if you're buying cheap lingerie, don't go for colors. Like pink and blue, they can look chintzy and cheap if they are cheap. Like the material just won't lend itself very well to um, bright colors. So just go basic black. You, I, I had this, I pulled this out of my drawer to like, cause I love lingerie, I have tons of it. I pulled this out of my drawer. I thought it was Asian Provocateur and I looked on the tag, it's from Target and it was 20 bucks. I was like, oh, great. Okay, whatever. No guy is checking your lingerie label. No guy is. And pair it with a little silky robe if you're not comfortable just standing there with like nipples out and like half your fanny flapping in the wind. Get a little thingy, maybe get one of his t-shirts and kind of like maybe cut the neck off so it kind of hangs a little. It's like, oh, do you recognize this? Don't cut up like a shirt he loves. You cut up his Princeton Varsity Club shirt off with their head. So in sum, this gift works because it's intentional. It is interactive. He's using his mind. He's walking around the house. Oh my gosh. It seems so incredibly thoughtful, but actually it's pretty darn cheap and it's pretty darn easy to execute. And more importantly, it's easy to tailor for wherever you are in your relationship, whatever your vibe is, whatever you're hoping to amplify. You know, if you want to like get a little naughtier, you can put that porn on. If he's like, what was that? You can be like, it's a joke. And then you start looking around for a new boyfriend who is freaky, okay? But you can downplay things and you can upplay other stuff. But basically, gifting and dates, it really is about communication. So if you don't know what a guy's gonna like, ask him, what was your best date? What was your worst date? Maybe his worst date was they were outside and they were walking around a ton and the girl was complaining, it was boring. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe the worst date was like, sitting at dinner, whoa. Think about what your best and worst date is. And if you don't have that data, if you haven't had a boyfriend or a serious relationship, think about your best times with your friends. What are you guys doing? Are you having a pillow fight at home and just like shooting the breeze and making popcorn? 
Okay, is it more about the bonding? Is it about going out, having experiences, doing things that are dynamic? Is it about learning and growing together, problem solving, doing a, one of those lock-in rooms? Don't take me to those. I'm awful at them. Awful. It's like my own personal haunted house because then everybody in the group has to see how bad I am at puzzles and like math. It's a nightmare. But I know that and I can tell that to a guy. So learn yourself, learn about your partner, and remember that any sort of date you want to go on, honey, you can take yourself on it. You don't need to wait for a guy. Check back tomorrow for some more Valentine's Day content. I'll see you later, my little cupids.